We were just talking in our email newsletter the other day about how Notion seems like it's poised for its next phase of growth. Notion's always been great from a productivity standpoint and really good for companies and knowledge management, but now it seems like it's evolving as it's added more with automations for databases, updated its formulas, added AI functionality, added project management functionality to really be centered around teams and building applications on top of Notion itself, which leads us to ask the question, how do you build an application on top of Notion? If you're familiar with Airtable, they have Softer and Stacker, and you can build applications on top of Airtable. If you have SmartSuite, you can build on top of it with Easy Portal. There's lots of options that are out there, but what do you do with Notion? So in today's video, we're really excited to talk about Notion apps. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we're a Notion implementation partner. If you haven't signed up for Notion apps, you can do so using the affiliate link in the description below. Now, as we take a look at Notion apps, it's not made by Notion, the company itself. This is a third-party company, and what they're doing is they have their own pricing model that sits on top of it, but it's really affordable when you think about it because the way they do it is that you can have external users, you can essentially have them by their email address, and they can log into the application without paying for a full Notion licensed user. So this actually ends up being a cost savings for many organizations where they say, hey, we've got our team of people who are using Notion internally, but maybe we have clients that we want to share data with. And so we want to build an application and they get access to it. And we can do that simply by paying for one of these plans. So there's a really generous free plan here, and then you'll see some paid options. And what I love about this is that it's that flat rate pricing. So if you scroll down and you can see these external users, 100 users, 5,000 users, unlimited users, you really have that flexibility to have a large number of people consuming the data from your application. So let's go ahead and get started. You can sign up with your email and I'm going to log in because I've done that already. You don't have to use the same email address as you have associated with your Notion account. So when we log in, it's our opportunity to create an application now. And so we could create a new app from scratch, but what I really like is that they have some app templates. And I think when you're building this for the first time, this is going to really ease that process of creating it for you. So in this example, we're going to create a client portal and we can see a preview of this. So you can check through some of the different templates that are there to see what it looks like before you select it. And what's nice is you can actually click through the different screens. You can click into it to see what this looks like ahead of time. And this is something that can be tweaked and modified as you go along. So if you're like, oh, I love the projects, but I want it to look differently, you can certainly change that. So this looks good. We are going to clone our app. And when we click this, this is going to tell us that we need to open this up. We've got a link here and we need to duplicate this into our own Notion workspace. So this opens up, I'm gonna press that duplicate button. And now this is duplicating it into my own Notion account that I have. And when this loads, we can see that it's now recreated all of our pages and databases that we have right here. So we've got our projects, about us, resources, testimonials, and really most importantly, the users that are here. We can click into that and we can see some data that's set up for it. We've got all of our information that we need to have some dummy data in our application. Let's go back in here and we'll click on the next step here. And now we need to connect our Notion template. So we duplicated the data over. Now we have to give Notion apps permission to be able to interact with Notion itself. So this is where we're going to select pages. And instead of giving it access to everything, I'm just going to give it access to that client portal that we just duplicated. So I'll click on allow access. And now we've completed two of our three steps. I'll click on next here. And this is where we're going to make sure that that's selected, that we've got the client portal and we'll click on clone. And this is now going to sync this together between Notion apps and Notion itself. And now we're in the builder area. And so what you'll notice right away is that we're looking at a mobile design here. And at first when I got started, I wasn't sure if it was mobile first, meaning it also works on desktop. But what you'll find is that this is just a mobile design. So this is a web application. You can load it in a browser, but it's always going to display like this. At this point in time, there's not a full width appearance for it. So I'm kind of hoping that's something that might be on the roadmap in the future uh, because I could see building internal applications would be nice to have the web application with a full desktop view. 
but this is great because it's already optimized for your phone. Now let's talk about the navigation a little bit. So this is all mocked up where we can actually click into the different components here. We can click on the different pages that we have. We've got a navigation along the bottom and we have a navigation on the side. So we can configure all of this, how it looks, how it feels, how the navigation works. And right now we're looking at this all projects screen because it's defaulting to that. That's what we see in our primary navigation here down at the bottom, but we can click to see all screens here. And this is where we can add new screens. If you take a look, we've got our bottom navigation and we have these different elements. So we've got updating these rows. Here's the all projects. And then we have the active projects. And then we have basically a form to request a new project. This is adding a new row to the projects table. So if we were to click on request project, what that's doing in the background is if we click on our projects, actually we're already here, that's going to add a new row into the database inside of Notion. So this works well both for creating records, updating records, reading the records that we have. It's not just a read only kind of interface, which is awesome. Now, as we take a look at this request a project, you can see we can put in our title and description. And these are the different fields that we have inside of Notion that we're mapped to. It's really nice. We can actually take a photo and we can upload that from our phone or from our computer. So we've got lots of functionality here, but I think the most impressive part to me is around the status. It says when you request a new project, the status will automatically be marked as pending. This is all business logic that you can configure here. So I tried to click it and I can't override it. I'm like, wow, how do we actually set up that kind of business logic in the application, which is pretty nice. So if I go ahead and I'm gonna click on request project, let's go ahead and customize the screen here. This is now the screen that you're seeing, the configuration layer is over on the right hand side here. And I'm scrolling down and at the bottom we've got our status. So you can see the input status and any of these fields you can click into and there's some different logic and configuration you can do. So we could change the label for this. Maybe we wanna call it stage instead or something else. And then this helper text that you saw here is just updated here. We could change what that looks like. And we have our different options that are mapped back inside a notion as our single select there. But this is where it gets really cool is that we've got behavior. We can say, is it a required field? We can also have a default value. So in this case, we're saying it's defaulting to pending but the part at which it's also not letting us change it, we can say disable changes. So all this together gives us that business logic that a lot of other application builders don't have. It's more just the UI piece, but now we can actually set that kind of logic. The other thing that we can do is we can have visibility logic that we can turn on and we can do that at a field level. And so we could say if a certain column is equal to X, then that's when we're going to display this, which I think is really awesome. Now I'm gonna to toggle this off here Let's go back to a different screen here. And I wanna talk about how we can use that same kind of logic for filtering as well. So if we go back and let's go to all projects here, maybe instead of all projects, we wanted to show just the projects that were in progress that are in progress or pending, but we don't wanna show the completed ones. So in this case, if we're updating this screen and we scroll down a little bit, We've got our behavior here and we can say, hey, we could add new data, we could search, we could allow scanning with a barcode, which is pretty crazy, but this is where we could add filtering to it. So we could say, if the status is not equal to completed and tab out, and now you can see that that actually filters that for us. So we can really configure these screens the way we want them to look. If we click over on our users tab, one of the really interesting things that we can do is we can limit our data depending on who is the logged in user. Because if we have something like projects, we might not want all of our clients to see the projects of the other clients. Instead, we'd wanna limit it so they can only see their own projects. And this we can do right out of the box. In fact, this is already set up with this template for us. But the idea here is that we've got our users database and if we change the permissions for that, essentially we're saying their email address is going to be that unique field that we're gonna look at to say, if that project is assigned to that email address, then only that person can see it. So the permissions property is our email here. And then what we can do is go down to any of our other databases like projects and we can change the permissions. And now we can say, what's the field that shows that ownership for that project? So in this case, this is the client. And just to show you, 
over inside of Notion on projects, if we scroll over here, we've got our client and this is where it's assigned to the email address. And the thing that you see here is that this third project here, so there are six projects and the third one is not assigned to anybody or it could be assigned to a different user at this point. And so we're not going to be able to see that if we're logged in with marketing and automation helpers.com, we're not going to be able to see that information. So let's take a look at this as a logged in user. Up here, we can publish our application and make sure we have all the latest changes. We can share this link. This is a subdomain that's unique to our application. We can add our own custom domain with a paid plan as well. I'm gonna open up our application here and we'll log in with our email address and then we'll click to get our login code. This is going to send us an email and we can log in with that. Now we can paste in a four digit code that we get from our email. We can go ahead and click and log in. So it's pretty easy to be able to handle your user management that way. And notice once we're logged in, we only see those five projects. We don't see all six of the projects because we are only assigned five of them. Some other things we can look at under the settings, we can give our app a name and a description. Again, we've got that subdomain, but we can add our own custom domain. If we're on a paid plan, we can change the colors for this, add an app icon. So there's a lot that we can do to really make this our own application. Now, I think that you'll get tremendous value from Notion apps as it is today, but there are three things that I'd really like to see in the product as it continues to evolve. One is going to be that we get that full width display. The second one is that if you make changes inside of Notion and you want that data reflected into your app and the users can see that data, then you have to either manually hit reload here in the builder, or you can add a button in the interface for them to click and reload the data. But that's not an experience that people are used to and that feels kind of awkward. So I would hope at some point there's a different way to be able to sync that data in near real time. And the third big feature I would ask for is support for the relation column. This sounds like it's coming soon, but right now we have those projects. Well, what if we had projects and tasks? Right now there's no way to say, hey, show me the tasks for this project. Let's click on the project and see the related tasks. So I think that's gonna be another big feature that'll be coming soon. All in all, it's really exciting to see how far Notion Apps has come in such a short period of time. And I'm really excited to see the next stage of what Notion Apps will become in the Notion ecosystem. If you have any questions about getting up and running with your Notion project or integrating to other business applications, don't hesitate to reach out to automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.